Hi everyone, it is October 4, 2018. You know, our focus has always been on money. The economy. The economy. The economy. The economy. Oh, God. We have so many problems that just never really get addressed. If we can't make the people in a society healthy and smart, critical thinkers, uh, questioning authority, it doesn't matter what else we fix because the people, the majority in that society, manifest the reality of that society. And I'm just going to go through a couple of articles that I got within the last two days that really reflect our society is in deep trouble. Deep trouble. A staggering number of troops are fat and tired. The RAND uh, report. Yeah, I know the RAND and I know that these polls, you know, you certainly do need to question you know, the percentages that they come out with, but it reflects, it reflects much of what we see every single day. It certainly reflects much of what we're all experiencing with our fellow Americans. 66% of service members are considered to be either overweight or obese. And that correlates with the obscenity epidemic plaguing the United States. One in three young adults are considered too fat to enlist. And the reasons for this obesity is not so much that Americans are lazy, it's because of the foods that they eat, our food supply being, it has been taken over by genetically modified organisms that create obesity. When you think about all of the children on antipsychotics in particular, antipsychotics, one of the side effects is obesity. So that's just two reasons. Then you look at how our culture has changed with this technology. Everyone is sitting, staring at a screen. Children, in particular, are not going out, not uh, running around. They're staring at screens. So this 2018 report lists the Army as the branch accounting for the highest percentage of overweight troops. 69.4% are overweight. Coast Guard, 67.8%. Navy, 64.6%. Air Force, 63.1%. Marine Corps, 60.9%. Another problem, a lot of our service members are having difficulty sleeping. Nearly 9% of military personnel reported taking sleeping medications either daily or almost daily. The Army reported the highest rate of sleep concerns with 10.6% of soldiers routinely consuming sleep aids. Marines, 9.9%. Air Force, 7.5%. Sailors, 6%. 59.4% of soldiers reported getting less sleep than needed. 33.2% answered that the lack of sleep contributed to being regularly bothered by an energy deficiency. For our active duty military personnel, Insomnia and sleep apnea are on the rise. Could that have anything to do 
with this Wi-Fi environment, Wi-Fi, microwave frequencies deplete melatonin, melatonin necessary to get a good night's sleep. Sleep disorders are a serious problem that interferes with the ability of soldiers to do their jobs effectively. Well, I will say that it's not just the military. It is all Americans across the board. Sleep disorders, sleep apnea, insomnia has been exponentially increasing as more and more Americans are glued to their cell phones. And now that we are saturated in a 24-7 inescapable environment of Wi-Fi microwave frequencies, well, it's only going to continue to rise. A government study has found that one in three U.S. adults eat fast food on any given day. Higher income families ate fast food more often than low income families. And, well, too much high calorie fast food can lead to obesity, diabetes, heart disease, and other health problems. One in three, one in three are capable of passing a U.S. citizenship test. And only 19% for Americans 45 and younger. Do you think something is wrong with our education system? I would say so. A third of Americans can pass a multiple choice U.S. citizenship test. Fumbling over such simple questions as the cause of the Cold War or naming just one thing Benjamin Franklin is famous for. The test, it only requires 60% of multiple choice questions to be answered correctly. 72% of respondents either incorrectly identified or were unsure of which states were part of the 13 original states. 24% could correctly identify one thing Benjamin Franklin was famous for. Multiple choice, by the way, with 37% believing he invented the light bulb. 12% incorrectly thought Dwight Housen, uh, Eisenhower led troops in the Civil War. 2% said the Cold War was caused by climate change. Americans need to brush up on history and current events if they want to make a reasoned pick in the upcoming midterm congressional elections. It has nothing to do with that because Americans really never thought about their candidates and never really looked very closely into the past of their candidates. So whether they know uh, that Dwight Eisenhower led the troops in the Civil War, it, it, it really doesn't matter. You know, the dumbing down of America has been going on for many generations. And I think each generation there's this collective thought within each generation that you weren't dumbed down. No, we were all really dumbed down. So it's not so much related to this election. We need an informed and engaged citizenry in order to maintain the constitutional republic. I say that you know, with the inflection that you should have heard a question mark. That constitutional republic was gone a long time ago. Knowledge of the history of our country is fundamental to maintaining a democratic society, which is imperiled today. It's been imperiled for hundreds of years, actually. So we are now. It's not just that our democratic society is in peril today. We're looking at the end 
like the last nail in the coffin. The experiment, the great American experiment, put in the hands of the ordinary citizen, the control over their government, guess what? The experiment was over a long time ago. And the people were incapable of controlling their government. <clears throat> now, the amount of time that children are staring at their iPads or their cell phones, it causes sleep disturbance and it causes their brains to malfunction. The evidence is in. So, why do we have a more and more dumbed down American population? This is one of the reasons. Right here. You want your children to have a working brain? Well, there are a lot of things that you need to do. You need to find foods that will actually sustain their health and provide the nutrients that their brain needs. You give them their iPhones, their iPads, and it's going to undo that good food that you give them. The frequencies penetrate children's brains easier than uh, adult brains. And it, these frequencies cross the blood-brain bar barrier. How many times have I said this? I'm not. So, parents, you need to get smarter and take those smart devices away from your children because it's ruining their brains. Peak U.S. exceptionalism, dead. Dead. Unexpectedly collapsed? No, it didn't. It was expected to collapse. It was driven to collapse. The collapse has been deliberate. But human capital? Wow, have we declined. American exceptionalism has peaked and it's on the down slide. The Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation at the University of Washington, they did a study. This is pretty uh, an intense study, very comprehensive. 195 countries and territories from the years 1990 to 2016, all systematically analyzed. And this was published last week in the Lancet. And the human capital that they were studying, it was the sum total of the population's health, skills, knowledge, experience, and habits. And boy, did we really decline. Over the past quarter century, there has been a tremendous progress in global health and education investments with Finland. And Finland is at the top of the list. The study confirms that American exceptionalism is waning as its human capital yield has collapsed from 6 on the list to 27. Wow. So it's been a rapid decline. China jumped from 69 to 44th. Turkey from 102nd. Out of the, the uh, 195 countries. So Turkey was at uh, 102 and they are now 43. South Korea from 18th to 6th place, Singapore from 43rd to 13th place. The U.S. ranked 6th in human capital in 1990 but dropped to 27th in 2016. Due to minimal progress 
in educational attainment due to standards that have changed educational standards deliberately dumbing down Americans due to the GMO takeover of our food due to the saturation of this uh, geoengineering spraying of toxic chemicals and heavy metals and one of the metals nanoparticulate aluminum that affects the brain causing dementia why is dementia on the rise could it be because we are saturated in aluminum whether it's in our products our deodorant our uh, or in the air that we breathe there are so many obvious you know reasons for this decline so when we only focus on the economy you know make America great again bring back the economy which is not being brought back by the way you're, you're being fed lie after lie after lie when we're only focusing on money it is obvious that the country's population is going to decline morally physically mentally spiritually so America's elites were too busy speculating in many stock market bubbles than investing in the real economy um, well that is part of the reason but here the evidence above shows that exceptionalism is dead we must recognize the empire has peaked make America great again might be much harder than you think and it is much harder than you know Trump even uh, communicates you know make America great again I brought back jobs what are the jobs the jobs are the same that Obama created Bush created service sector jobs part-time jobs so you know I came across this article today enough lies Bosnian village bans politicians you've been lying to us for years no party is welcome in Podgora a white banner strung across the main square of this 700 person village uh, which lies only 18 miles from Sarajevo you're not welcome no politicians we're done with your lies guess what some people are capable of thinking outside the box Americans need to start thinking again and then think outside the box in order to uh, bring back some health overall health to our society without that we're just going to continue to keep de declining there's no reversing this without Americans changing. All links are below.